I think it's been, what, four and a half years <laughs> since we first met in this same spot mm -hmm. to consider the NAID certification um, project that we've gotten into. And here we are now, uh, near the end of it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Near the end of it. It's good to be back uh, in this retreat, so thank you for bringing us back here again. Um, oh, you're welcome. It's been some time. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a lovely spot. It's a lovely spot to meet, so I just... While we're here, I want to be sure that I commend all of you for the excellent work that you've done on this project. But I also want to welcome Heather to our team. She was Heather's our math lab coordinator, and she is the newest member of our team. Yay! Yay. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I've been speaking with tutors and with students and several of you on the team regarding the vision that you all have for the math department and we're very excited and we have a few suggestions that we'd like to share with you when the time is right. Fantastic. It sounds like you're ready to hit the ground running. <laughs> we are and we're very excited to be part of this process. Well, we're looking forward to hearing more from you about our students' experiences in the math lab uh, from your perspective since we have made the changes that we have to developmental mathematics and also perhaps how um, we can capitalize on the strengths of the math lab to more fully integrate what you offer into our developmental mathematics courses. That sounds great. We're very excited to share our ideas with you and we hope that we can become an integral part of the math department. Fantastic. Great. Okay, so let's sum up where we are. Um, Jane, would you update us on the process to this point? Sure. Um, well, as you know, we've collected and analyzed two years of baseline data, both the data that assesses our own goals that we have set as a department, as well as the additional data that's required by NAID certification. Uh, in doing that, we have implemented quite a number of program changes. Right now, I'm really excited to say that we have collected and anal analyzed two years of comparative data, and it's showing some really strong results, and so that's exciting. Okay, well what did you find out? I'd like to know that. Was it what you expected? Well, let me defer that question to some of the team members okay. and, and see what they have to say. Um, let me jump in here. Um, because of the changes we've made, we expected to see some improvement in our success rates in beginning algebra. That was the course we concentrated on. Mm -hmm. um, we defined success as those students receiving an A, a B, or a C. Um, we thought we might see, or at least we hoped we might see, about a 5% increase in our success rates. That's sort of the figure we see around the state. That seems would have brought us in line with the state figures. Okay. Well, we did have a 4.5% increase, but it was in enrollment and beginning <laughs> out of it from the first year of our comparative data to the second year. Turns out it only added a little over one student a section, so it was minimal impact, but it was scary at first. <clears throat> but what is exciting is that we have seen the number and percent of students who persist to the end of the semester increase and the number and percent of students who are successful also increased. Yeah, right. So there. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think were some of the reasons for these increases? Well, we tried to improve what we teach and how we teach it. Um, we all agreed on the most important learning objectives. Um, and we used the learning theories, the basic of our, basis of our program, <coughs> to better assess and make use of our students' prior knowledge. And I think the improvements can also be attributed to everyone knowing better what was expected of them. We all use common text, required common course objectives, and minimum required course content. All the teachers knew and were able to work on the same page. The common student learning objectives that we had for beginning algebra, communicated our specific expectations to the students. This combination of both instructors and students having a better understanding of where we were and where we were going seems to have helped the students persist to the end of the class and succeed at a higher rate. The number and percent of withdrawals also went down, so we're keeping them a little better. And the students 
even though we have a few more in each class, they're staying and performing better. Another bit of possible good news is that dropouts may be going down, but we need to keep collecting data to assess that. You know, I think this is super information. I really do. It, it, it's so difficult to try to isolate um, individual changes and mm -hmm. assume that one thing makes a difference in student success and persistence. Mm -hmm. It, yeah. There really was a, a great deal of focus on the change process, and uh, faculty were excited and eager and involved in the process. And you know, we, we made a, a great number of educational changes. Yeah. So I think that collectively, these have, have made a difference in our student success rates. And I think that's something we can say. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Very good. Now we need to keep in mind that we're not conducting a scientific study here. So we're not as worried about those, you know, things that might be impacting it other than our changes. But what we are concerned about is knowing that we are getting involved in the best practice of continually assessing, continually gathering and collecting information, and then making data-driven decisions for improvements to our program. And that's where we are, and that's where I'm interested in us being. Well, as part-time faculty, um, I think we could say that the knowledge that um, we gathered and that we gained by being included in the process, and, and we certainly thank everybody for that inclusion, was important as we learned more about um, the diagnostic tools and the instructional strategies and, uh, and about our students. We felt better about being prepared as we started the term, and you know, and that was good for us, even though we still had large class sizes. <laughs> it's not my fault. That's all right. Well, I think that has to make a difference. <laughs> well, we didn't get to hire any extra full-time faculty, um, mm -hmm. but our part-time faculty came through like troopers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and they stuck with us. Okay, so therefore the people who were teaching uh, when we started this process are still the same people who are teaching as we finish it. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, this was a good thing. It did eliminate one potentially confounding variable. Yeah. Speaking of variables, I happen to have the comparative data with me. Mm -hmm. When we were looking at fall to fall and spring to spring in the baseline data, we were having 60% successful persisters those that stayed at the end of the semester made A's or C's. In our comparative data, in fall of 2010, our first year, we had 64% successful completers. In fall of 11, we had 67%. Spring of 11 was 63, spring of 12, 65. So semester to semester increase, year to year also increased. Yeah. That is very encouraging. Do you think we're in a position to continue this progress? I think that by having everyone generate input into the process, we've created more buy-in um, and ownership of the results. Um, therefore, we work harder and have more confidence in that the process works. Okay. Yeah. We also created better communication between regular and part-time faculty, um, as well as with the faculty in subsequent courses. Um, we hope that the articulation between their courses and our courses will continue to improve. Jenny, since your technical math course is the required math for earning a variety of certificates and associate degrees, um, I'm wondering if you've seen any changes in the students that have come directly into your technical math course from the beginning algebra course since we've made these changes. Well, yes, we have. Actually, even though we haven't done any formal study or research, many of the technical math faculty have remarked that the incoming students from beginning algebra have seemed to struggle much less with the concepts and the evaluation pieces from the course than in previous years and semesters. And we started seeing this uh, trend last year, but the positive comments have only increased this year. 
and there were just not those negative comments of frustration from faculty that students were struggling and weren't prepared like there had been before. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we plan to take a look at our pass rates for the technical math course to see if there have been any changes since the beginning algebra changes were made and we're hoping that we will see our pass rates have improved as well. It would be wonderful to find that out. I'm so glad that you're interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. Great. So, um, so it sounds like we're ready to begin filling out the application packet. And I want us to be sure that we start with the most current NAE certification application checklist. Didn't we get one of those at the Institute? Why can't we use that one? Yes, we did. But just in case anything has changed between then and now, remember it's been quite a few years, so we want to be very sure that the data that we're collecting and the way that we're organizing everything is in, in the process uh, that NAE certification reviewers are looking at now. So I'm going to encourage us to go to NAEcertification.net and be sure that we download the most current checklist. I know we don't want to get a pending or have our application delayed in any way, shape, or form if we have missed something. So let's just do that. Great. 